Hey guys, Taro here, bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Elst Outskirts, one of the new maps in the auto match rotation. Thank you for spawning in the north. We have Wind Talker playing as used forces, and his loadout is Tactical Support, Rifle Company, and Infantry Company. Teaming up with him is the Bosnian Badger, also as used forces, has Infantry Company, Airborne, and Heavy Cavalry in the south. Got a double OKW team. Rayon goes with fortifications, breakthrough, and special operations. Teaming up with him is Clean Xari, who has elite armor, fortifications, and Overwatch. Let's have a look at the tactical map for this map. Okay, so we've got the fuel quite on the far edges of the map. Munitions, quite safe position, but it can be cut off. One of these cut offs, like, oh, very easy access to that central. Uh... In fact, I, I, cast a I cast a game on this map, but it was a 1v1, right? For the uh, British Front Tournament. So yeah, pretty easy access to that cutoff. So they'll be quite hard to like get this cutoff and tape, uh, hold it. So that munitions point will be pretty safe all game, I'd say. Did they make any revisions? I remember that the uh, red cover distribution on this map was a bit unfair. Yeah, don't think so. Bit about the teams are pretty similar, like overall, both random teams. One player quite highly ranked, the other player close to rank 400. Should be a pretty, uh, pretty good even match. And look at that, you can actually do some capping from behind that fence and it protects you from fire from the garrison, that's interesting. Nice little feature. Stupani is charging in across negative cover, that is just a terrible idea. He's probably going to lose them here. No, he rounds the corner behind the logs. Yeah, looks like it's going to save him. Oh, that was so close though. Oh my god. And then we got a very early US mortar here for Windtalker. Kind of fair because there's that garrison here that King Rex is probably going to be using. A bit of fighting going on. Quite a few garrisons on this map, so. Oh, very early grenades here. And a nice attempt there, throwing it at the exit door there. Just reacted in time though. Perhaps the uh, throw was a bit more to the south of the door, not quite on target. But a nice attempt there. Couple going after the mortar, forcing it back. We could have just stuck it out there. I think the weapon crew might have been able to beat the Kubel at that low amount of health. Unnecessary retreat. And it looks like the axis off to a pretty st strong start thanks to their Kugels. All that capping. So Allies got a pretty pretty poor cool amount of fuel control right now. So we've got a truck coming out over here. And the one over here. It will be interesting to see what the split is. Okay, we've got a mid truck over here. The fact that he's sending this truck out so far suggests that he's probably going for a med truck as well. They got double med trucks. But I mean, they are in complete control right now, the Axis. And uh, I didn't, I missed it, but Wintalk actually lost his rear echelons. Unusual build. He's going for the captain. He's going for a very early ambulance. Uh, this, this is not a good build. Uh, going for the captain is fine, but um, at the moment he could have another squad of infantry to actually fight with instead of this ambulance. And uh, maybe with the extra squad he'd actually have some map control. We've got a captain hitting the field. 
in resources is a lot more important right now than trying to play efficient with your manpower. Well, he's trying to soft retreat to the ambulance, heal them up. There's some cute plays, but uh, still getting overwhelmed here by the larger army of Clenorexi. Oh. No, he's being lobbed in. Is he gonna? Yeah, he gets him. Steals that garrison. Incendiary grenade in return. Rockman should be able to win this engagement anyway, though. That could get the wipe. Looks like he switched his targets to the other squad. I'm gonna get the wipe. And uh, yeah, he's been pushed right back. That ambulance had to get out of there thanks to that Panzer Shrek. And the Bosnian Badger also going for an early ambulance. What is up with these two US players going for the early ambulance? A 2v2 situation like this, you can share an ambulance. And it's, you know, it's an ambulance, it can AOE heal everything, it's the best form of healing in the game. So it's not like, you know, using a med bunker between two Axis players it can sometimes stress the med bunker because they can only heal three models at a time. Ambulance can heal everything. It's going to get away. So yeah, going for two ambulances this early is really setting them back in terms of map control. He's gone for a pack houser as well as a mortar. This probably exposing who is the rank 400 player on this team. Sorry to say it. This for the Bosnian Badger. Still hasn't done his tech. Which is a. Uh, you should probably get your tech going. Like, get that free squad. He's going to have to go for Captain, of course. Far too late to go for Lieutenant now. He's going to need access to that anti-tank gun, I'm pretty sure. That being said, both the OKW players, of course, have gone. With a battle group and no flak half-track, so... US forces players could be getting punished really, really hard right here for their terrible map control situation, but both players going for those battle groups means they can't get the light vehicles out to punish this uh, poor start from the US players. And quite often in this situation, you know, if I was against double US forces, I'd go for a Puma first, but in this situation where you have so much map control, you know that their shoot's going to be so late. Looks would uh, really seal the match right here, right now. The problem with the looks against double use forces, of course, is probably going to be facing double Stuart, and then you're just going to get reamed. Not going to find enough opportunities to make proper use of it, but yeah. In this situation where you're so far ahead, go just really finish them off. Oh, this is going to be a wipe here. There it goes, Stampine needs down, so that's a good pickup for the Bosnian Badger. And he's got the cutoff as well, going for that cutoff. Cutting off the fuel. going in oh nice throw on that grenade once again aiming at the door slightly with a lot of damage to that squad and, uh, they also got out in just the nick of time that could have been really nasty machine gun would have got flattened in there but man look at this map control this is just absolutely dominating as i was saying though Munitions is very hard to cut off on this map, so we're going to see a couple of bars from Wind Talk, and maybe this can start to turn the game around. It's going to start winning those infantry engagements. Oh, 
Anyway, like Bad Rifleman slightly better than uh, STG Fox. Oh my god! So much negative cover there and they just melted. I can't believe how quickly that squad died. Also got Vet 2 on the rifle squad. So man, all of a sudden, clean Rexy, look at his army size, tiny. He's lost so much, he's invested all this into tech. Also gone for a preemptive Rikissim. So his army is basically nothing, look at that, it's got two squads. Machine gun and a <laughs> This is maybe where the wind talker can uh, start to get a bit of more map control. And look at this, he's going for a fighting position to try to cover this VP. Yeah, that's a waste of munitions, and he could actually lose the squad. No, should have chased there. Try to do the uh, maximum damage as they cross the road. That flak base has been spotted, forcing away that squad. Pretty uh, okay position there. It's going to be able to fight at the uh, shoot at the garrison, but at the same time, it could be used against you if your opponent jumps in this garrison to provide sight on that and brings up an anti tank gun to shoot at this. Flak base will take a long time to kill the squad inside the garrison. So sometimes you think, well, that's a good idea. I can use this to prevent him from using the garrison, but actually can backfire on you. Especially against such a, like a high health building. In fact, now he's now he's just killing now he's just killing the building himself, so obviously that strategy I outlined is not on his mind. Got another forward ambulance here, this time from the Bosnian Badger. Having to fight these folks on the front line. Got a forward retreat point. I mean, this is not that far out from his base, but he feels that is worth the 300 manpower. And uh, is that his truck? No, where is his truck? Why hasn't he? Why hasn't he got it? Oh, his truck's back here. Already set up. Very defensive positioning, though. Which is fair enough, because we've seen <laughs> so many games where this uh, flak base dies and the OKW team loses. But uh, the Allies have fought back quite valiantly, as I was saying, with no light vehicle to punish the poor Axis. I mean, the poor Allied start. They're going to fight their way back into this game. This is a part of the problem playing as OKW. You have to tick all the way to tier 4 before you can get your Obers out, so you can. There's a bit of a lull in your infantry firepower, you can't really match it up with these ranges until you get those Obers out, which does take a long time to save up that much fuel. These bars really doing the damage here. A fresh squad of shrieked up Sturms from Clean Rixi. It's clearly who likes to do. Man, look at these bars just rip in right here. Oh, another squad down. My god. He lost his Rakesson as well. That is some just terrible squad preservation for Clean Rixi. You gotta respect. Bard Rifleman at that range, that's like pretty much perfect for them and now they're hitting Vet 2, Vet 3. They're so deadly. I think he's perhaps overestimating the firepower of his STG folks. Oh wow, he's gone for a fighting position as well. Wasn't he a badger? Upgrading with a machine gun. Oh, I, I saw that coming. ISG trying to soften that up. It's a few uh, re echelon models there. Might as well just keep pumping away at that with this ISG. Pretty safe positioning as well, just inside the arc. Just flak base, unlikely to get stolen. Yeah, that's gonna die. The allies kind of are neglecting their fuel at the moment, just trying to win the 
infantry engagements could come back to bite them. And Rainbow OKW has such powerful vehicles. But they've been seeing another problem with both players going for this tech choice is that there's going to be no walking stuk, and we all know how powerful walking stukers are in 2v2. Often uh, one of the deciding factors on who wins the game. That's how well that walking stuker performs. Oh man, those guys were so clubbed up there. I thought that's going to be the miracle hit from the P4. No, no. Yeah, that stolen or kid and coming back to bite him immediately. Could be the end of the Q will probably on to a tank grenade and go down here. Just forgotten about. It's gone for double ice, jeez. Interesting choice. I mean he's at 200 fuel now. He could get another No, he's gonna tick. Maybe he's gonna go straight for the King Tiger. Oh man. Oh that ice G shell! Squad down. Oh you can just see it like floating in there. And uh, they clumped up a bit more on retreat. That was just a disaster. What was that? <laughs> Wait, how, why did he throw a sending grenade right there? What was that? This guy was dead for a good seven seconds or so before that incendiary grenade came out. Oh man. Oh, oh that's going to be dead. There it goes. Range is going after those ISGs. He's had enough. He wants to get revenge for that wipe. We can't. Too many STG Fox. And now it's starting to hit Vet 4, Vet 5. This is when STG Fox start being able to dish it out. They get. The problem with them is, you know, that they gain a lot of uh, offensive bonuses in those last two stages of variance. So until they get there. They're neither, they're not super durable, they're not super damaging, kind of just like a all rounder squad. Just frighten them, you know, once they have V3, that's when they get, look how many bonuses and no, uh, they get, and uh, you may be noticing, whoa, look at that. You see the numbers, that's a mod. Well, it's not really a mod. But uh, there's gonna be a news post about this on Code2.org shortly, but check on the forums, and download this. It's like a, basically a text file, you just put it in location on your, in like your Steam library and uh, yeah you get all the variancy bonuses laid out for you in numbers, something that should have been in the game all along, <laughs> finally implemented by a uh, modder, well done, and as you can see works during replace, works in auto match, it's not, it's not so much a mod, you know, it's not like a mod pack, but replacing a text file contains all those variancy descriptions very handy I think the guy's name on uh, Kotu.org is Harold the uh, username so you can look up his posts and uh, track that down and install it yourself But the game's kind of uh, stagnated a little bit. Once again, the allies have almost no fuel control. It doesn't really matter for the Bosnian badge, of course. It's going straight for that Pershing. When Talker has ticked, got the Major, but maybe he's just going to go straight for tactical support as well. With a bit of support weapon play. No, he's going for the Jackson. And uh, this is probably the tank that you'd want to get the Jackson up, up against. The OKW Panzer IV, with this poor moving accuracy, you can have a hard time chasing down Jackson. You know, 40 range versus the Jackson's 60. That range as well, and that Jackson's extra bit of penetration does make a difference against those armoured skirts. Even though it's 200 damage, does not. <laughs> I 
as a forward, killing this uh, cover here almost results in the wipe of that damn pioneer squad, but Eichmann decided to retreat. This thing's racked up pretty nice kill count already, 13. One building destroyed. Oh yeah, it must have been the uh, fighting position. Maybe? Maybe he rebuilt it? I don't know. King Tiger. Yep, straight KT for Rayon. And uh, pretty much the exact same timing. Here comes the Pershing. A bit late though. I think it's quite a while ago. He's been at 13 CPs for basically whole command point. Probably should manage his manpower a bit better. Make sure he can get it straight away. But yeah, upon seeing that Pershing, those folks get out of there. Seeing there's a white machine. Great AoE. Nice main gun. But uh, doesn't match up too well against the King Tiger. The same range, 45 range. Oh, look at that shot! Oh my god, and that's what I was saying. That Pershing is just a white machine, man. It's so insane. It's like peekaboo. Oh, there goes the squad. And that's actually a problem. No more repairs for the King Tiger. Let's go for rebuild those stems. Oh, Sturm Tiger, King Tiger. Okay. He's used the uh, signal relay. Jackson looks like it's coming over to try fight the King Tiger. Bit of teamwork here from these two. And we have a M1 as well. So it looks like you know, they're gonna kind of just play defensively over here. They've got a tank gun mortar, a few squads. Should be able to defend this VP alright. And then uh, maybe try double team this King Tiger. King Tiger actually bounces. Pretty rare for it to bounce on the Pershing. Not having much luck at all today. And Jackson's actually back in position. Before sitting around. Stim Tiger goes off three kills. Pretty bad, uh, pretty bad shot there, honestly. <laughs> Thought that could have been uh, a couple wipes. Look how fast his eyes. Jeez, that did they get a mobility bonus? Yeah, bit too. Run around a bit quicker. Pershing trying to mix it up. He uses the double tap there. And bounces both those Rakitin shots. Kind of lucky. Same point he's being upgraded with the sweeper. Of course that gives him the bonus repair speed. Should be able to get that KT back on his feet quite quickly. Now this has been just <laughs> camped out here for a while. All but forgotten. For the tree point now as well for clean Rexy. Clean Xari. I'm saying that wrong. Clean Xari. Okay, there we go. Self corrected. Only took 25 minutes, eh? So. <laughs> oh lord. What I'm not understanding is why CB Rayon isn't just constantly barraging this this region of the map with his ice cheese. He's got them up to her veterancy now. That's when they gain the extra bit of range. So it should just be just blasting this region over and over again. Oh man, oh there go those Obers. Once again, clean, clean Xari. Just uh, pretty bad preservation. A couple of fuel caches. 
down here for the allies good because their fuel controls be pretty dreadful for most of this game trying to catch up tank support is here. Sherman ready. but yeah as we can see here the problem with what the axis are doing is they just don't have the indirect fire right now walking stuka would just be able to mop all of this up over here similar situation with over here Plus, he's not quite cutting it Stream target does fulfill a similar role but it's just a bit, bit hard to use you have to get it up close and quite often your opponent can hear its engine noise it's a little bit harder to use also locks you into this commander this doesn't have too much else to offer oh here we go we've got a easy eight and a jackson going after the panzer four He's had a pretty good choice against the Sturm Tiger because Sturm Tiger does 640 damage per hit. So I can't actually one shot the Easy 8 because it can one shot most other medium tanks. But uh, Sturm Tiger also does like ridiculous crits. <laughs> so you, your chances of surviving after the Sturm Tiger shot pretty low, but can't happen. Pretty even VP match despite that extremely strong start from the Axis. The Allies have been able to hold on to this VP for most of the game. And there's a JP4 coming in. Clean Xaria. I think that's a good choice. Good compliment to his uh, current force. We've got some uh, flares coming in here from the Rifleman, I imagine. Often seen abilities. Oh, there goes the Rakes, and this could be the end of the Panzer IV. Yeah, man, why did he stick around for so long there? And this could be the end of his Sturm Pioneers as well. No. Oh. No. He's trying to set up a uh, Sturm Tiger shot there. Right from behind the hedges, aren't they? Oh, Rakes, <laughs> he's white. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they had a line of sight through those uh, hedges. It's going to turn on the fog of war, but shot it before I had time to. Ten kills in uh, what, three shots? That's um, alright. So he's going to try to kill that kitten. Doesn't want like that being recruit. But yeah, there was some good teamwork bringing over the Pershing and the Jackson all at once. JP4 coming forth with the armor piercing rounds. Pershing going after it. And man, this Pershing is just bouncing so much. He's having incredibly good luck with it. And there it goes. JP4 down. Just uh, clean. Clean Zari, man. He just needs to. Uh, Work on his preservation. He, you know, he just like left this Panzer IV over here for ages whilst it was being shot at. He could have you know, used the combat blitz to try and speed away. And then his JP4, you know, he kind of just brought it in really aggressive with almost no support. And I uh, shouldn't be surprised when it gets just smashed down by three enemy tanks. No need to get your JP4 that close, it's got that 60 range. But yeah, we did see the heat rounds at least. Is, uh, as you can see, the bonus penetration and damage. I think it's plus 30 percent damage. I used to know that, but... Another fighting position. These two US players like their fighting positions. They do seem to be going alright. This one here has done a lot of work this game. And the Axis kind of losing sight of uh, the objectives here. They could be capping up this whole side uncontested right now. A 
being said, they're also quite a, a long squad. And now we've got two Jacksons and an easy eight. Him talker in a pretty good position there. Yeah, and you can see the problem with the stern target. He, he heard it coming. He got out of there. Here comes the Pershing. So yeah, I mean, I think a... Oh, well, look at this. Going after the KT. This Jackson behind the tree line, though. And he runs over a mine, and there goes the easy 8 Just like that, in the blink of an eye. Stern Tiger shot. Misses. Looks like he's trying to hit the Pershing. Jackson decides to back away. Man. Yeah, my clutch. Pershing going after the Stern Tiger. Not much to stop him here. Look at this, he's only got like three units. It's a Faust. It's a little bit of damage, but it's not going to snare him on that amount of health. King Tiger coming over to support now, but man, man, Xari. This preservation is just so atrocious. And now we've got a JP4, this time from Rayon. See if he can uh, make better use of it. Ready, set. Using attack rounds through the smoke. Why, why aren't those ISGs firing at that? Right back in base. Bring them up a bit further. Increase the travel time of those shells, maybe increase the chance of them actually hitting something. Oh my god, is this squad gonna survive? Whoa! Oh! Oh no! <laughs> oh, that poor shell. Playing with the other squad, he was at wiping that one man out on retreat. Yeah, once again, the axe has kind of lost, lost sight. They could be capping up this entire site uncontested. So trying to slug it out for their central VP. Oh. Pershing just rampaging forwards. Nothing to stop him here. And now they're actually getting quite low on fuel despite that incredible lead they had earlier. Oh, there we go. You can see that engine crit. Oh, oh no, this got cooked up and I missed it. Just before. It's down that engine crit. Probably going to wear off shortly. This is not a temporary crit. Okay, it looks like it's not a temporary crit. Let's really make those... There's a few of those outstanding. Like that. But this is most commonly used for the temporary crits these days. That's why it's got the clock on it, right? Show 300 points on their line. It doesn't appear to be temporary in this case. Oh man, the Axis are uh, on, uh, on the ropes here. Rayon's still got a large pop cap. But uh, it's, you know, it's been tied up in these ISGs. It's doing alright, but... Oh, and this Pac-43, when did he build this? Obviously not too long ago. So this is going to be the end of the battle group. Here it goes. But I mean, what is what is this even protecting over here? You know? It's like right outside your base, basically. It's not... They're going to get too much done. And now, without the uh, battle group there, can't heal and reinforce it either. Questionable uh, decision building that pack 43. is permanent. Is that a major
damage of recon pass. It is indeed. Good to see that getting used. There's the uh, not fed it up. I think it's vet three gets the extra. Uh, oh, nice no, vet one gets the extra plane. That recon pass. Oh, once again, this time he gets the immobilized crit on the Pershing. Is it gonna? Is something gonna be able to come and uh, follow up? We've got the white phosphorus on the pack. Can only get it to low. This is unlike the British white phosphorus. Can't actually kill. Oh, Jackson's coming in. And no, it looks like they're actually going to try to shoot at the Schwer HQ. We've got some recon flares providing them sights. They can snipe at this long range. Should be able to take it down quite quickly. And there's another JP4. The outside of the range for that. Oh, maybe the Pac-43 could actually shoot them. We he actually just decided to turn it around. Gonna let that Shure HQ die, and there comes the major artillery to finish the job on the Pack 43. And uh, Pershing's being repaired up, so they didn't manage to capitalize on this. He's very close to Vet 3 as well. This is where it starts just shooting like a machine gun. Everyone's worst nightmare, Vet 3 Pershing. He's yet sitting around here, it's gonna take engine damage. In front of the Rakitin, still sitting around. Here comes the King Tiger, is he gonna blitz forward and try to get the kill? Turn to I guess shell. Mm. Got a few models, don't think they've got any wipes. They did it up so quickly though with those two shots on the Pershing. And now we've got some zeroing artillery in the center. Kind of in the center. Maybe you need a line of sight for this to work. Like it may actually drop on the squad though. He has sight, yeah, definitely a sight. Yeah, that's the vetted up recon pass coming through. JP4 mixing up with the Pershing. Is he going to lose the Pershing right here? What is he doing? Yeah, there it goes. May major mistake. Can't underestimate the JP4 with those heat rounds, that bonus penetration does come in handy. Oh, straight away calls in another one though, he was floating up enough. Major artillery trying to focus on those infantry support guns to get away. And the Axis are holding on, this King Tiger just sitting on that central VP making it impossible to cap and uh, allies haven't been capping this. VP out here, which is also pretty much undefended. So I mean, this basically this entire half of the map has been forgotten about by both teams, which is a bit of a shame. Well, here comes the fresh pushing, but this one doesn't have the Vet 3 reload buffs. And his luck really ran out with that Pershing. It was, before this, it was getting extremely lucky bouncing everything, and now, now it's not bouncing a single shot. Oh my god, everything connected, everything penetrating. Yeah, his luck has definitely run out with that Pershing. The Jackson's going after the Sturm Tag. It's got its rear armor exposed. Looks like this one using the high velocity armor piercing rounds. It points a bit of damage. Kitten's going to take out one of them. And a 
In fact, looks like the other one's going to go down with the JP4 chases. He's kind of backed himself into a corner here. I don't think trading two Jacksons for a Sturm Tiger is worthwhile. Oh, there it goes. I thought he'd be able to get around it, but not quite. Pops the smoke. It's ally pops the smoke, but doesn't get the job done. And maybe if one of these squads was a rifleman squad, might have been able to snare this and save that Jackson, but he's lost all his rifles. They can't get any snares off. The axe is hanging on here. It's looking pretty grim for them, for them, but I mean, now the allies have suffered quite a lot, losing both those Jacksons. Very reckless. And there's the walking Stuka. Oh man. Water down. Almost took down the ambulance. I mean, that could have been so much worse. Kind of a lucky break there for the allies. Stuka could have got so many whites right there. That was a good decision, especially now that that uh, Sturm Tuck is down, they really need it. Yeah, you've nearly vet one already on that, from one barrage. Good stuff. There's one of the other benefits from uh, Signal Relay. From this doctrine, I mean, I know there's... Not a uh, Rayon who has it, but you know, you can use... Signal Rio to spot your enemy's ambulance and then use that to target your Stuka strikes. Be powerful tool. You don't have access to other forms of recon. Oh no! I would not trade a Ranger squad for a Fox Junior squad. Definitely not worth. My phosphorus on the base. Bit of a waste. There you go. JP4 over here, and now they're access to remembering. Oh, yeah, we can go over on the right hand side of the map. We might even get some fuel out of it. Allies had a similar thought going for the VP like, oh, maybe we could close out the VP game if we stop just running everything into the center. Go for the other VP. So the uh, period of tunnel vision appears to be over from both teams. Another fuel cache down as well, so the allies just kind of over resourced right now. Get that 57 munitions, 45 fuel. Got so much fuel in the bank. Oh, this looks like it's going to be the end of the easy eights. Jeep will try to chase. Ooh, gets away. Easy eights very, very fast. Ooh, here comes the Persian going in for a flank on the King Tiger, perhaps. Maybe he's going to go after the Walking Stuka now. Pretty decent barrage going after the mortars it looks like. Got an event one as well. Three kills. Yeah, not too good. Yeah, he's definitely going after the uh, walking Stuka. Very risky. Okay, can try and chase him down. Can target and JP4 heading over. Could this be the end of the next Pershing? JP4 going on a very weird chase. Probably should have tried to come across this way, try and intercept him rather than following his previous route. Attacking in and this King Tiger starting to stack up some VET 65 kills now, VET 3. This thing has definitely been the ank. I mean, I say the anchor because it would be like this weighing them down, but it'd be like the anchor in the center of the game was holding them in the match. Just ripping into these allied squads, just bleeding their manpower so hard. Wiping squads like crazy.
72 kills now. <laughs> you just keep stacking them up. Kinko Verency though, not that impressive. Um, can have a look. Blitz. Tower of Rotation is the main one from here. A little bit more accuracy. Spearhead, which is pretty garbage. So yeah, in this first three stage of Verency actually doesn't get that much better. And, uh, yeah, this last two stages a little bit more acceleration and sight which is very welcome 20% reload if you can pair the 20% at vet 5 to 50% at vet 3 for the Pershing so it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really compare does it so the Pershing ends up with similar amounts of uh, variancy bonuses across its three stages of variancy King Tiger does across its five. But that being said, I mean, King Tiger's already so powerful. Doesn't really need it that much. It's kind of, oh, it's like, what's coming in here? No, that's the major locking down the sector. That's why the uh, mini map is illuminated like that. Oh, easy eight. Be about to catch this JP fly out of position. No. It's now facing the right direction. It looks like he's given up on trying to board the Pershing. I mean, uh, not the Pershings. Jax is now. This is going to go for, for easy 8 spam. Which is uh, probably a fair idea. If you want to go on those like big plays like he did before, like chasing down roads, going for those deep flanks, and the extra bit of health that the easy 8s have is very valuable. I think it's like 720 or 760 health on them. Get to the 480 of the Jackson makes a huge difference. Go after the mortars once again. Man, he just came so unlucky with those shots on the mortars. I was about to set up a triple cap though, Axis. We were grinding their way back into this game, but it seems to be slowing down. No, he's going for another Jackson. He runs over a mine. This is already taking some damage though, a bit risky to try and um, go for a bit of follow up. But here comes another Sturm Tiger. For Phoenix Ari. Looks like that was the end of the Rakitan there. Tiger Vet 4 now, 79 kills. He's going for another JP4, try to support it. So his preservation is a bit better on this one. He's got a few mines down, very good. He can bait these tanks over these mines up here. So this could go really well for the Axis. No, I'm going to back away after that Rakitan reveals itself. But triple cap going. Axis really need to make something happen. Neutralize this one. I'm not in the center. Version going after the Sturm Tiger. DP4 rotating now is back up to full. That Pershing's veered up very quickly, already vet 2. JP4 going after the Pershing. Enemy neutralized. And there's a courier. Pershing's going to be able to get away. There's M1 in the, in the way. It's not. The Pershing's going in. Goes. Oh, who's going to win this one? It's going to be the JP4. No oh, bounces. Christian trying to get the flank off here. Oh, he gives up. He's going to pop smoke. Oh, but the heat round connects on the rear arm of the Pershing. Oh man, another Pershing down. 
Was the badge's preservation of that version? Doesn't mean too good. Here we go. In comes big armored force from Wind Talker. Trying to cap this VP. Kentucky still just locking down the center. Leading anything tries to cap there. Kind of surprised that no shots have just scattered and killed these tanks. Oh no, they're going to run over the mines! They're trying to kill the King Tiger and they both of them run over the mines. Where's that JP4, that fresh JP4? Here it comes. Could this be the end of the armored forces from Wintalker? Oh, there goes the Jackson! King Tiger feels uh, threatened though. And he's Squads can really do much. JP4 trying to get the crush and he does. Crossing away those squads. Now he's going after that wounded EZ8. Double JP4s. In fact, both of them have engine damage right here. I don't know how the second one has to run over every single one of those mines coming good. Nice play there by Rayon. EZ8 down. One more to go. No smoke from Windtalker. Very disappointing. The strength of the shim is the smoke. Might have been able to get away with this last one. Maybe he smoke crit repair, something like that. But yeah, there goes all of Windtalker's army, basically. He's down to 39 supply. And just like that, I mean, rounds at Popcap, Clean Zari's in a good spot now. Pershing, no surprises there. But yeah, I mean, I thought the Axis were out of this one, but all of a sudden, yeah, those mines, man, just mines win games. Never been more true than right here. I was getting some S mines up onto this VP. Very good. Which was uh, pretty much the strength of fortifications. S mines from the Fox Trinities. Oh, there goes the Major. No more forward retreats for Windtalker unless he rebuilds it. Most players don't. Going for a Jackson. Oh, I don't like I don't like this choice, man. I don't like going for the Jackson in this situation against these uh, JP4s. I don't think it's the right choice. Especially uh, with this much veterancy on them. Oh, it looks like he's supervised the construction of those Jacksons. Nice, uh, nice trick there. It's like, how do you build the second one so quickly? But yeah, supervise. Good work. But yeah, the, the problem is, is Jacksons with their 200 damage just doesn't matter against the JP4. Still four hits to kill them. This JP4 can kill the Jackson in three hits. With the addition of the camouflage, as we've seen on micro tips, being incredibly broken. The chance of you killing JP4s with your Jackson is just so poor. Much better off going for the EZ8, which can at least get close enough to reveal them in the camouflage. Get the flanks going and the extra bit of health. Definitely. Right, now five shots from the JP4 to, to kill the EZ8. Right, and three shots, so obviously you can do the mess there. Makes things a lot better. Yeah, Pershing doesn't really have its way anymore. If you three, uh, three JP4. He's uh, very, very nasty. Another squad down. Doesn't quite get the ambulance though. Oh my god. Where's the retreats? There goes retreats this time. Probably going to be another wipe though. Rangers aren't playing around. 
once again some uh, terrible infantry preservation from King Zari. I don't know what he's doing there. A couple bunkers going down. Looks like Axe is going to try to camp out these two right hand side VPs. Oh, pushing in a bit of trouble. Yeah, King Tiger nearly Vet 5. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen a Vet 5 KT. A long while. Neither of these commanders really have those big off map artillery strikes either, so it's quite hard to clear out these bunkers. Can't just drop, drop artillery on them. Especially when you want to be using your major as your forward retreat point. What's new Badger now going for Pershing? I mean, not Pershing, but Jackson. Pershing taking a walloping, sitting in front of this. Oh, keep going, mate. What are you doing? Oh, he retreats. Bunkers doing their work though, preventing this flank. Pop smoke on it. It looks like one of the Jacksons went down with the JP4, and there goes the other one. This, this is, it looks like just down to one JP4. Takes down both the Jacksons. And uh, as you can see, it's just, Jacksons just don't match up well against fed up JP4s. It's just a, should have gone for this. Easy eights. Well, taking down the bunker. Chris Jackson. This will retreat immediately. And tank gun coming in now. Uh, extremely costly push there from the Axis. Took down two bunkers, but they lost so much. Look at this tank graveyard there. back here, oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Walking Stuka coming in. Just targeting. Huh? Where'd this vehicle crew come from? Oh, he must have put a squad in this one. That's how it got fear and see, right? Oh, I must see him finally using some bow rounds to take aim. Could this be the end of the Sturm Tiger? Pershing coming in. JP4 here, though, in support. Looks like Sturm Tiger. Oh, he's going to get away, I think. Now the vetted up JP4 coming in from the side. Probably going to be the end of this Jackson. White Pershing just being so risky here. Probably going to go down to this KT. No, gets out of range just in the nick of time. A couple of anti-tank guns here. He used to use those Sabo rounds as Wind Talker though. And also Bosnia Badger during that probably should have brought his anti-tank gun up here in support. Might have actually got a kill if they had uh, done that. And I know that. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I know that there's a walking stuka on the field, but I feel like the allies kind of need a 50 cal in the center. Get a bit of suppression going. Otherwise, they just can't win those uh, BP wars. And they can't really get a fighting position because it'll just go down to the JP4s. So they kind of have to just get the, uh, yeah, <laughs> just four kills. <laughs> oh my god. They kind of just have to get 50 cal. But I don't think either of them are thinking about ticking to loot. Oh, he's actually already got a lieutenant, so he could do it. Bosnian Badger. Oh, JP4 coming forward. Right after the. Jackson, not going to get it, remember. Fifth 5, JP4 now. It's got that 
Yeah, first strike bonus from uh, camouflage plus 150 percent damage, penetration, and accuracy. It's just insane, man. And he's at his access to the heat rounds. I'm pretty sure he pops heat rounds first and then shoots the Jackson or one hit the Jackson. So <laughs> there you go. I mean, you saw how much, I think there was just one hit did uh, about two thirds, maybe even three quarters of the Jackson's health. And it uh, looks like they surrender. Whoa, wow. What a back and forth game. Axis got off just such a strong start, but Kleenex Ari's preservation was a bit poor. Allowed their allies to grind their way back into this game. But this King Tiger, just camping the central VP, kept the Axis in the game. And then over here, this push from Windtalker, running over all those mines, losing all his armor. I think that was probably the turning point at which the allies could never really get back into this game. And they need to change their strategy, man. Sending in, you know, one squad at a time to try and cap whilst the King Tiger's shooting at them. It's a terrible way to spend your manpower. You just forgot about this VP for ages and ages. But both teams forgot about this entire side of the map. But yeah, definitely a few things for both teams to work on. But pretty fun match. And Route King Tiger, 104 kills. And also this JP4 Vet 5. Anyway guys, I'll wrap on that. If you'd like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.